We've covered a bunch of privacy related web extensions on this channel from things such as uBlock Origin to LibreJS. And today we're covering one that is far less known. This is Chameleon. Now, Chameleon Selling Point is basically regarding changing your user agent string. So the user agent string is basically a string held by your browser that says what browser you're on, what operating system you're on, what browser version you're on, and in many cases, this can be used to infer the device you're using as well, especially when you're using a mobile device. Now, as with most pieces of data when it comes to fingerprinting, no individual piece of data is enough to fingerprint or identify a user. But if privacy is something you care about, what you want to do is minimize the value of your data and the ability to link your different sessions together. So the general idea is this. By default, my Firefox session is going to say, hey, my user agent string is Firefox, it's this version, this user is on Linux, and all of that fun stuff. Now, the thing that you don't want to do is use a random user agent string because most people are using actual user agent strings and that is going to stand out way more than just using something actually valid. So what you can do instead is cycle through actual real user agent strings. So by default, it's gonna use your real profile, but if we go to random profile desktop, every single minute, it's gonna swap me over to what looks like a different browser. There are plenty of ways to check this, but if we go to Google right now and type in, what is my user agent string? It shows it in a really nice format. So right now it thinks I'm on Firefox still, but it thinks I'm actually on Mac OS 11 and using Firefox ESR. Obviously, that's not what I'm doing. And after it changes again, now it thinks I'm on Edge running on macOS. Now, keep in mind that some websites use the user agent string to determine what can actually be used on that site. For example, if I go and change it to a, let's see, a version on Windows, go and change it to Internet Explorer 11, a lot of sites don't work the way you'd expect them to. For example, YouTube will tell you to go and update your browser. Now, if you want to make sure this doesn't happen, what you can do is go into the list, select whatever you want to get rid of. So in this case, I want to go and get rid of anything related to Windows 11. Then click on the exclude button here, and then those things will never be shown anymore. Generally, most things are fine as long as it's not Internet Explorer because that has been deprecated and most sites just accept like, if you're using Internet Explorer, you just don't get to be here anymore. The other thing I would avoid doing is using a mobile user agent string. So we can do that by going and selecting random profile mobile. The problem with doing this is a lot of sites out there, especially the larger sites, use the user agent string to work out whether to show you the desktop version of the site or the mobile version of the site. YouTube is perfectly usable with the mobile version, other sites not so much. Now some of you who know about user agent strings might be saying, I don't need an extension to do this, and yes, you are absolutely right, but this extension makes it really, really convenient, and if you have to do it manually, you're just probably not going to do it. So if you're on Firefox and you want to do it manually, what you can do is go into your about config, and then set a variable called general user agent dot override. This does not exist by default. Obviously, it needs to be set to a string. And then you can go and set this to whatever user agent string you want it to be. Over on the Chromium side, it's slightly more difficult. It's just a few extra steps. So go into inspect element, go to where these three dots are here, go down to more tools, then find network conditions. And in the network conditions tab, you'll see a section called user agent. Untick the section that says use browser default, and then there is a list here where you can go and select pretty much anything that you want. Or if you want, you can go and add a custom user agent string. The advantage of the extension though, is this will go and change it automatically for you by default every minute, but if you want it to be quicker or slower, that is a thing you can do. So you can go and have it as 5, 10, 20, 30, so on and so forth a custom interval, or no. Now, the way no works is every time you go and reselect random profile, it will go and select a random profile and then leave it at that until you go and change it again. That by itself would already be enough to sell the extension, but it's got some other fun things as well. 
Some of those, though, I don't think you should use. The first one being enable DNT, do not track. This basically adds a tag to your HTTP header that tells websites not to track you. Now, this has been deprecated because what it's used for is to track you because nobody else uses it except like 10 people who care about privacy. And it makes it very easy to work out who those 10 people are if they all have a flashing sign above their head saying, I care about privacy. Prevent e-tag tracking is a little bit more useful. E-tags are basically a cache optimization to make it so it's easier to look up resources that have already been loaded. It can also be used in some form of fingerprinting, so you may want to avoid them. The accept language is basically the language the browser thinks your system is running in. And some sites take this uh, quite literally. So if we go and set this to something like Chinese Hong Kong and go to YouTube, um, it will basically go and auto-translate stuff for us. The spoof cross-folded for via IP is basically a way for sites to obtain your IP address, but most sites typically avoid it, and if sites need to obtain your IP, it's going to be done on the server site anyway, and doing this doesn't really matter. And the referrer options are basically how you got referred to the site. How did you get from your previous site to this site? If you disable the referrer altogether, this is going to be more private in ways, but many sites just break entirely. So what you're better off doing is messing with what information is actually being sent. So the cross-origin policy is what to do if you're coming from one domain and going to another domain. So let's say you're going from Google over to Amazon. Then the trimming policy is what should actually be shown in the URL. Are you going to be trimming things off like the query string and things like that and just showing the base domain? Now, those were things being modified about the header being sent to the website, but you might want to modify things about the browser itself. Now, keep in mind that a lot of the options in this section will break various sites. For example, blocking media devices. These are devices like, say, your webcam or your microphone. If they are blocked, obviously sites that need them won't be able to use them. But other things aren't as detrimental. For example, limiting your tab history. Your browser offers an API to go backwards in your tab history, and this can be used to work out what sites you were previously on. Now, protecting your keyboard fingerprint is interesting. So the way you type basically gives an idea about who you are. And to protect your fingerprint, what you need to do is add in some randomness, add in some delays to the way that you're typing. This will make typing in any text boxes feel a lot less fluent, things like that. Now, with the time zone option, technically this will change the way it's reported in the browser, but there are other ways to discern this, one of those being with your IP address, and if you really need to make sure your time zone isn't being detected, you need to be doing this inside of a VM where you can control it on the system level. There are also some options that cannot be changed by default because they require extra permissions in the browser. These are things like enabling first-party isolation, enabling the fingerprint resistance, and things like that. First-party isolation is effectively disabling third-party cookies, and fingerprint resisting will make the browser report a lot of generic information. Now, when it says resisting, this does not mean that fingerprinting is impossible. There is a lot of other avenues to fingerprint a browser, and if you want to know exactly what this is doing, I highly recommend reading the documentation. The documentation for this is really useful and really well written, gives you an explanation of what basically every option does, and why in some cases you may not want to go and use it, because in some cases, like spoofing client recs, might break certain websites. Now, like most privacy-related extensions, you can go on whitelist sites, going down to the cog here, going to the whitelist section, and then adding in the sites that you don't want to be affected. This is done through a regex method, so for a site like Reddit, for example, you don't have to go and whitelist the entirety of Reddit, you can go and whitelist certain subreddits and things like that. And if you're too lazy to work out what each individual option does, what you can do is download a pre-configured profile. So there is a casual version and an advanced version. And once you've downloaded that, what you can do is go back to the settings, click the import button, and then load in all of your settings. And if you want to export your settings and use it on a different version of Firefox, you can go and do that as well. 
I didn't mention this earlier, but this is only a Firefox extension, so if you're on the Chromium side, you won't be able to use it. If all you want to do, though, is change out your user agent string, there are various user agent switches that will do basically that just fine. But my main reason for going with this extension is because a lot of the privacy-related extensions, for whatever reason, seem to think privacy means having a horrendous UI. I don't know why, but none of them seem to work out. Those things are not mutually exclusive. You can have a well-designed application and still care about privacy, and clearly, this shows it. Now, as with any privacy-related extension, using it by itself is not going to make you private online. There's basically nothing out there that's gonna do that. I'm not gonna turn this into a VPN ad, don't worry about it. But if you want to obfuscate yourself as much as possible, this is something you'd certainly add into your toolchain. So let me know your thoughts on Chameleon in the comment section down below. If you like this video, remember to go and hit the like button. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon subscribe something bearer pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me. So I'm out.